Hi, we're here at the Health Experience Design Conference. I'm with Robin O'Brien, who is the author of The Unhealthy Truth, uh, One Mother's Shocking Investigation in the Dangers of America's Food Supply and What Every Family Can Do to Protect Itself. Uh, she is also the founder of Allergy Kits Foundation. As we all know, the current food su supply system is unsustainable here in America. Uh, we can't keep eating like this for our own health and for the system itself as well. So tell us how you started on this journey and uh, what have you found out? Well, you know, I wasn't looking for this situation at right. all. I was a food industry analyst. I was a financial analyst. One of the industries I covered was food industry. I covered tech. And so I always looked at everything kind of from this cost-benefit analysis. And um, when my husband and I decided to have kids, I traded the briefcase for a diaper bag and threw myself into motherhood. Right. And, you know, up until that point, I really truly had not given a whole lot of thought about the foods that we were feeding our family, what I was eating. Um, what were I, you eating? You know, I grew up in Texas, so it was kind of meat and potatoes, but I had my fair share of Twinkies and Doritos and Ding Dongs. I mean, I wasn't a foodie. I wasn't a purist by any means. I just thought if it was on grocery store shelves, it was safe. Right. And, um, and then when we had the children, we had four kids in just over five years. And truly at that point, I didn't want anybody telling me what to eat. I didn't want them telling me what to feed my kids. Right. You know, as any parent knows, it's hard enough just to get kids to eat and then on a budget with limited time and everything else. And about six years ago, one of our children had an allergic reaction one morning over breakfast. And truly at that point, it was so stunning to me that a child could actually be allergic to food, mm -hmm. to something that you have to have in your life to nourish you, to grow and thrive. Um, it just, it was this cognitive dissonance. It was like, how could that possibly be? How could food be so dangerous to a child? hadn't known anybody with food allergies when I was a kid. I had sort of dismissed the whole food allergy thing as alarmist. And um, all of a sudden here I was confronted by the swollen, swollen face of my own daughter. Um, and as we raced her to the pediatrician, you know, I started to learn these statistics. And at that point, six years ago, one out of 17 kids under the age of three had a food allergy. From 1997 till 2002, there had been a doubling of the peanut allergy. And then I later went on to learn that according to the CDC, there had been a 265% increase in the rates of hospitalizations related to food allergies. So that's doctors checking people into the ER. And as I began to learn that, you know, and learning that a food allergy is when your body sees food as foreign, to me it just begged this question, you know, what has changed in our food supply? And nothing could have prepared me for that answer because so much has. And as we've learned over the last couple of weeks with this whole pink slime issue, the United States Department of Agriculture, there were a couple of microbiologists inside who happened to be dads, and they were reviewing this ingredient, this filler used in our ground beef that's known as lean beef trimmings, and they were basically saying, this is not fit for human consumption. And the reason they sounded the alarm on it was because the USDA had just bought 7 million pounds of it to go into the National School Lunch Program to be fed to our kids. This is a, an ingredient, a filler, that had been rejected by McDonald's, Taco Bell, Burger King it was kind so of let's used, feed it to the kids who can't say anything about right. it. Right, and that was going into the, the school lunch program. And so as I started to learn all of this, you know, that we do today right. have artificial growth hormones, additives, fillers like pink slime, um, genetically engineered ingredients that are there are no long term human studies on. We really hopped our food supply up on a whole bunch of ingredients. Mm -hmm. And as a business model, it makes sense. It drives profitability for the food industry what's it doing to the health of our country. The jury is out on that one. And when you look at the fact that the U.S. spends more on health care costs than any, right. than any other country in the planet, mm -hmm. that the CIA ranks us life expectancy at birth, I mean, you would think, I would have thought, that the U.S. would have been pretty high at the top of the list for life expectancy at birth. Yeah. We are at number 50. That right. is shocking to me. And as I learned this information, the fact that this generation of children has earned the title Generation Rx, I thought, you know, the, the very health of our country, our ability to thrive in the global marketplace, to lend our talents, to collaborate and innovate and design these new programs to drive our economy forward, to drive our country forward, is 100% contingent on the health of the next generation. And so, you know, here we have this extraordinary opportunity to design a new health care system that is truly focused on health care and not just on disease management. Because what we've got right now is a prescription focused model and what we can develop is a prevention focused one and I think that is true healthcare how do you prevent how do we conserve our health right. 
and that opportunity in front of us is extraordinary. The system of producing food is broken. Right? We have GMO products. We have a lot of chemicals going into our food production. Um, just starting from that, you studied the industry. Is there a way to shift that? What is the trigger point? Because they're so profitable doing what they do now. Yeah, and they wouldn't say it's broken at all. You know, the chemical right. industries and the people. Well, they're not associated with the health industry. <laughs> We're just seeing all the effects. But, you know, I think a great example is Kraft. For example, you know, a third of their product category now are better for you products. They have pulled things like high fructose corn syrup from some of their products. Mm -hmm. They've pulled things like artificial dyes from some of their products. They're introducing an increasingly growing number of organic products. You know, they're responding to consumer demand and the consumers are saying, hey, we want to opt out of this stuff. We don't want this junk in our food anymore. I think in part that is a very self-interested drive because they've got these healthcare costs that they're seeing in their own companies. And so Kraft, who knows how many thousands of employees they have, they're bearing those healthcare costs. You know, the rates of diabetes, obesity, all of these conditions, autism, allergies, it's impacting all of us. It doesn't matter where you are socioeconomically. Right. It doesn't matter where you are politically, on what side of the aisle. It is impacting absolutely all of us. What, what I've found is that diet is like religion. It is not one size fits all. Right. And so you have to give people permission to do what they can, where they are, with what they have. And is there an opportunity to see, that you see to tie, you know, can your doctor say, walk into Kraft and say, stop giving my patients these products, these foods? You do see there are doctors' organizations that are really starting to, to step in and create organizations around this. You have Physicians for Responsible Medicine. You have um, organizations like the National Academy of Science was one of the first to say genetically engineered foods may present a risk when it comes to allergies. So you do have these organizations that are really courageously stepping forward. It's great to have this conversation here with you, Robin. Uh, everyday people can also, you know, make their own choices. Obviously, they don't have to wait for doctors to take the stand. Um, and you talk all about that in your book. So I'd like to point you to Robin's book, The Unhealthy Truth. And thank you so much for you. spending time with us today. Thanks for the great work.